photography. Everyone knows what it is. You just take out your phone, take a selfie, and man, you made a photograph. In fact, the word photography comes from the Greek roots phos and graphe, which means drawing with light. But back in the old days, when mobile phones weren't the thing and cinema didn't even exist, photography wasn't even a word. You can find people like George Washington taking a photo on the Battle of Yorktown, or Leonardo da Vinci taking a photo of the Mona Lisa instead of having to paint her, or heck, even taking a selfie. But instead, someone had to paint the Battle of Yorktown, and Leonardo da Vinci had to paint the Mona Lisa. So today, I pretend to bring you on this journey with me as we discover the history behind photography. Now, photography wasn't the thing that was just invented directly, but instead several discoveries piled up into what we know as photography. It's just like a sandwich, and the bread of this sandwich is the camera obscura. First described around the 5th century BCE, a camera obscura is a dark space that has a hole that lets light shine through it. The light shines through the hole and then ends up on the opposite wall forming an inverted image of what's seen outside. This was used to make paintings or to look at the sun without burning your retinas. After that, light sensitive materials such as silver nitrates and silver chlorides were discovered. And those materials could potentially be used to create something that, when hit by light, captures that light. And by joining that with the camera obscura, you can make a camera. And that's exactly what Nicefeur Nips decided to do. He was born in eastern France and served as a staff officer in the French army under Napoleon. And he even spent a few years in Italy before being forced to resign by his health. And in 1795, he resigned as the administrator of Nice in order to pursue photography. The man lacked artistic ability, and so he decided to investigate a way to capture those camera obscura reflections with some of those light sensitive materials. And in 1822, he managed to make the first photo ever, which got accidentally destroyed while trying to make copies of. But he didn't give up, and in 1825, he did another photograph. Notice the asterisk. Well, it wasn't a normal photograph, what Neff's did was essentially photocopies. You know how if you grab a source of light and put two papers on top of it, one with a drawing and one without anything, the image on the first paper can be seen on the second one. So, instead of putting a second paper, what he did was put one of those light sensitive materials. So, he didn't do a photograph exactly, but instead he did photocopies to make lithographs which was a method for making photocopies using the properties of water and oil. And then in 1827, he used vitamin coated pewter. Vitamin is this weird liquid slash semi-solid form of petroleum, and pewter is a metal alloy, in case you were wondering. And with that, he finally trapped the light in that weird vitamin material and transferred it to a paper, making the first photograph ever. A view from a window at his house at Le Cas. The problem with that weird vitamin material is that even with everything done, the photo still took several days to take. He had to leave his camera on his window for several days to make sure that the light properly interacted with that weird vitamin material and thus make an image. So, obviously, some improvements had to be made. Louis Daguerre. And so entered Louis Daguerre, a man born in northern France who learned architecture, theatre design, and panoramic painting. In fact, he was a popular designer for theatre and invented the diorama. In 1829, he and Gibbs formed a partnership in which both wanted to discover new ways to make photographs. And together, they made the Visototype, which was a way to make images, but instead of using vitamin coated pewter, they used lambda oil residue dissolved in alcohol. This reduced the exposure time of an image from several days to just about 8 hours, depending on the amount of light, which was great, but still wasn't enough. After Nip's death in 1833, Daguerre continued experimenting and he invented the daguerreotype, which was the first publicly available photographic process. And over time, the daguerreotypes improved, from needing to spend hours taking an image to just about minutes. To make a daguerreotype, you had to polish a sheet of silver plated copper to a mirror, make it light sensitive, expose it in a camera, 
Free mercury vapor to make the image visible, remove sensitivity to light with a weird chemical treatment, freeze it and dry it and seal the result in a glass. With a weird chemical treatment, you might as well get a chemistry degree because it looks really complex. And that was just for one picture. So imagine if you wanted to take several pictures and continuously adapt. You wouldn't be able to. And you know how nowadays people are always seeing things like Oh, you can see the pixels in that video. Or things like, oh, my camera come, goes up to 4K. Oh, mine goes up to 8K. Well, the camera type resolution was practically infinite. So now if people ask you what your new use resolution is, instead of saying 4K or 8K, you can just tell them it's the camera type resolution. And they will hate you even more. <laughs> Anyways, with the improved versions, now portraits could be done. But because the exposure time was still a bit long, and forcing a smile for that long was really hard, people tended to put a more neutral face, and sometimes even looked mad. Henry Fox Talbot. And then later came Henry Fox Talbot, an English scientist who invented the cat type and the sorted papers processes, which were actually precursors of other photographic processes later down the line. He was born in southwest England, and he was studied at Trinity College, where he won the Porcelain Prize of Classics in 1820. He also improved the process to make images using silver salts. Now, silver salts were already being used by Thomas Wedgwood and Mrs. Swan Nips, but they couldn't find a way to make the image not fatally darken when being exposed to sunlight. And not only that, but he also invented the calotype, which was a process to print or see or show the images. But even after all those improvements, photographers still had to carry the camera, the tripod, the box full of weird chemical treatments. And do you remember that chemistry degree you got earlier? Well, yeah, you still have to put it to good use because now it's even weirder. And you had to bring so many things that people went around in the bands. Photographic bands existed. That's a thing. That's a genuine picture of a photographic band. What? And then came George Eastman. The man who changed all that in 1888 with the invention of the Kodak Brownie. Wait. Kodak? Brownie? And the Kodak Brownie was presented with the slogan You press the button, we do the rest. And now anyone could take a photograph. But not only a photograph, but several photographs, as the Kodak camera could take film to make at least a hundred photos. And then, after those hundred photos were taken, the whole camera and the film was taken to the factory. And the factory later brought back the negatives, the print, the camera, and the new film installing to the camera to make a hundred new photographs. It was also targeted to the kids, so people got a chemistry degree for nothing at this point. And it got upgrades, like for example the first few versions, you couldn't see what you were taking a photo of. And they even got a coloured version, to make coloured photographs. One improvement that was really important was the move to celluloid, which improved the quality of the images and also allowed people to take several images per second, which is essentially what videos are, several images passing rapidly in a few seconds. And despite being extremely important back in the day, nowadays the Kodak company has gone through bankruptcy a few times. And all those improvements and creations made what we now know as photography. Analog became digital, and now cameras are ubiquitous. They are everywhere. People have them in their phones, which they carry everywhere. And thanks to the internet, they can also be shared. And heck, what you're watching right now are several images being passed every second. So you're seeing images. And basically, photography is awesome. Also, the flash were freaking bombs. No joke, the flashes literally exploded to make light. What? I mean, like, who let these people walk around with bombs? Imagine if this flash was a bomb and it just did BOMB! <coughs> Maybe it's actually good that we changed that. <laughs>